Greetings fellow football managers and welcome to the wonderful world of defensive midfielders. We've got a defensive midfielder on defend and a regista in support next to him. So both of these guys are in the defensive midfield strata and I've left the rest of the midfield completely open just so that we can have a look at these two roles, how they work together and then change the roles up and see what that does. Now right off the bat a lot of you will know that the regista is a playmaker and the defensive midfielder is more of a holding role. This is the first thing I'm going to point out, especially when you're using a two-man midfield, even a three-man midfield, it can be really useful to use what is called a holding midfielder in your defensive midfield. How can you define whether a midfielder is holding or not? You can click on him here and you can see hold position there. They require players to remain largely in their assigned position. What that means is this player is going to stay in this part of the field. Obviously, he may not always stay to the left. He might come into the middle, especially when the ball is up on the right-hand side. But he'll generally anchor the midfield and let your other player do a little bit of roaming. The Regista, if we look at him, has roam from position. He's also on support duty. Support duty, as we know, will support attacks. And roam from position means he's going to get to the sides a little bit more as well. He's essentially going to go wherever he wants to based on his player personality. If we look at this guy, work rate 15, teamwork 15, off the ball 14, his physicals aren't quite there. Natural fitness and stamina, not quite there, so he may not work as dynamically as some other players in this role, but generally he'll be really mobile and he'll do well with it, with things like decisions and composure, all of that stuff's in a good state. One of the key pieces of information that the Football Manager 24, in fact some of the previous football managers also give you with the Regista role, is that it's best used in a high press kind of setup where you are expected to be the better team. You're generally going to be a good team and looking to dominate the play. And look at that, that's my Regista already getting involved, getting right into that D, into that kind of golden zone kind of area, playing a pass first and then trying to take a chance. Obviously, trying to head the ball in from 22, 23 yards was an interesting decision, but that is something that does happen in Football Manager that we can't quite solve just yet. It can be solved by bringing the mentality of the player down. I am, as you can see on the bottom left, in attacking, and the Regista is generally a positive role too, so the player will do crazy things like that. The point of the Regista, as you probably just saw, he moved all the way to the right side for that throw-in. The point of the Regista is to move around the pitch really aggressively and dynamically and to affect the play as it moves around. Your Regista is your number one playmaker in the team, unless you have something like a Trequatista as well. In that case, these will be kind of tying in a way where the Regista controls the bottom of the pitch and your Trequatista controls the top of the pitch in terms of a playmaking ball magnet -y kind of fashion. Regista is very much a playmaker, and therefore your other players will try and give him the ball. He will also move around really aggressively, really assertively, in order to get the ball, especially when you're playing with an attacking mentality, you're playing high up the pitch. And that high up the pitch component is quite important because it gives the Regista a lot of room to operate. If he's in a crowded midfield, you might not really get everything that you want out of a Regista. You might struggle to actually give the guy the space and the time on the ball that he wants to. But in this formation of 4-2-4, I'm opening up the midfield a lot. I'm trying to also press high, push the opposition back as far as possible, and therefore give the Regista some room to play with. He's got runners in front of him. He's got players dropping short for the ball. That's what he wants. He's got a wing back and attack on the left. He's got a winger attack on the right. He's got lots of options and lots of players to hit. Even more important than options to hit, though, I think, is you need to give the Regista a player next to him. And again, I'm just going to pause this Luis Diaz run just here. If we go into our tactics once more, I have used the holding midfielder. So just going to get back to that. A holding midfielder is really vital because they provide the defensive stability you need as your Regista gets out of position. You do want at least one midfielder holding and anchoring that area, recycling the ball, because they'll pick up those second balls when a ball gets cleared, this guy is in a perfect position to actually pick it up and then give it back to the Regista. That is the kind of role you have this guy for. You might also put him on something like a ball-winning midfielder. Now, a defensive midfielder as a holding role is very, very simple. He's not going to dribble very much. He's not going to shoot very much. Part of the reason for not shoot very much in a defense duty is that he's not going to be in position to shoot. He's always going to be somewhere here. He's going to be just ahead of your center backs. And therefore, he would need to have some player moves with... Uh, for example get further forward 
or run with ball or something to actually get him into shooting position. On counterattacks, you will see him get in there and actually try and score some goals. But generally speaking, in open play, you will just have him recycling the ball. The other role you can choose, or one of the other roles you can choose, is ball-winning midfielder. This does basically the same thing, with one caveat. Tackle harder. You might also say take more risks, and take fewer risks is a big thing to talk about. The ball-winning midfielder is really looking to play much shorter passes, or much safer passes, because he doesn't take any risks. The defensive midfielder is a little bit more expansive with his passing. As you can see, the risk factor is untouched. You can actually change this up and down. You can say take fewer risks or take more risks. Now, the ball-winning midfielder's big lock-in is the tackle harder feature. This can be tricky. Obviously, when we think of a ball-winning midfielder, we are thinking of those guys like Vinnie Jones, I suppose. Although, that's probably a bit wrong since Vinnie Jones was a bit more of an attacking central midfielder. So was Roy Keane, I would say, but he was kind of the holding midfielder in that team. Point is, both of those guys had a very interesting temperament. They used to kick people. They used to get one or two red cards a season. I think that's true. Roy Keane got, what was it? They were talking about it on that weird show that they have going. 13 red cards or something in his Premier League career, something like that, or league career. Vinnie Jones, I think, was averaging about the same. Point is, they both had that dirtiness in them. They both had that kind of lack of sportsmanship in a way. That, again, may be slightly harsh, may be slightly untrue. Then again, listening to those guys talk and watching documentaries about them. Uh, the point here is that Tackle Harder, matched with a personality like that, and a player who has a little bit more dirtiness, can be a bit of a risk. Because that player will then go in with that dirtiness attribute unchecked, their aggression unchecked, they're going to make some big tackles, they could be making some dirty tackles. You might see a couple of sending offs during the season when you put tackle harder either on a roll or your whole team. You might also see yellow cards popping up really quickly, in which case he's a trick. Change him to defensive midfielder and then make those instructions a little bit more conservative. Click take fewer risks, for example. That essentially makes him kind of a ball-winning midfielder light just without the tackles, but he's still going to be playing those really short, really risk-free passes to the other players around him. Potentially somebody like a Regista who's sitting next to him. If you want, you can also then ease off tackles to make it even safer. He could still get himself sent off with a second yellow, but you're hoping not, and you're reducing the odds by doing this. So when you're playing the Regista, you can play a holding midfielder or a ball-winning midfielder or something in any kind of position. You don't have to have it in a deep line two, as I have it here. You can actually play a three like this and have a Regista sitting back here. That is absolutely no problem. But you do want, again, that holding player like this. A central midfielder defender or a ball-winning midfielder defender or something like that. Somebody, again, to hold the midfield while the Regista does his thing. Another really interesting holding option in this defensive midfield is your anchor man. If we look at the anchor man again, he profiles very similar to a something like a ball winner, but he's not going there and making tackles. He's also very, very defensive. If we just compare him with a defensive midfielder here, the anchor man is, I think, slightly withdrawn. If we look at the ball winner, yeah, the anchor man is a little bit further back of him. So the anchor man is a super conservative role in terms of his mentality and his positioning. He's literally going to sit just in front of the centre-backs, and be a buddy in there. If you're a good team like Liverpool playing at home against a Fulham, for example, and playing an attacking tactic, Anchorman is probably not the right role for you because he's going to be sitting somewhere here. He's really not going to be contributing very much to your high press or doing anything like that. He is good when you're playing something like a 4-5-1 and all of your players are kind of back here, you're doing something like this, let's say, then an Anchorman can be quite cool because he will make up another body, he will block those passing lanes, things like that. A 4-5-1, a classic one like this, the Anchorman works really well in this role as well. Again, if you're playing a lower block, something like that, the Anchorman can be really good in locking down this number 10 area and preventing opposition players from getting there. So your sentiment attack, sometimes your Metalas, all of these roles can be locked up by the Anchorman. That could be really, really good. But in a tactic like this, you don't really want an Anchorman. So I've reset again. Let's talk about the deep-lying playmaker. This right here is not a tactic I would generally put together because that's two playmakers sitting right next to each other. Not the best idea generally. But the deep-lying playmaker is a really interesting option as well. He will act as a bit of a ball magnet. 
However, he is also a holding role. The deep-lying playmaker on defend is a really good example of a holding midfielder who is also not too afraid to pass the ball. He will be a ball magnet. If you want him not to be a ball magnet, just switch him to a defensive midfielder defend. That has the same passing profile as a deep-lying playmaker generally. The passing directness might be different, so that's something you can tweak up a little bit. But generally speaking, the instructions will be the same but the deep-lying playmaker will attract the ball more. So if you want to play through this guy, set him as a deep-lying playmaker. That's why I say I wouldn't play two playmakers together like this, because the Regista can come deep and get the ball himself. He doesn't need a deep-lying playmaker to attract the ball first. However, if you do need a holding role next to whatever other role you have there, a deep-lying playmaker is really cool because it has a little bit more passing freedom as well. If we switch this to support duty, you can see that take more risks just got activated. So in support, the big difference between support and defend for a deep-lying playmaker is that the deep-lying playmaker's support is really going to play that quarterback role. He's going to try and sling those passes through. He's going to try through balls. He's going to try balls over the top. He's going to do a few different things in an attacking sense from passing, but he's also going to hold position. So it is a holding role. It's just slightly higher. So he might get into shooting range. And in this kind of setup where the front line is really high, I'm playing attacking, I'm pressing really high, and I have two players in the support strata, if I want a deep-lying role and I'm not playing a Regista, this deep-lying playmaker would be a really good option because he would take the ball and then look to sling it to the other side, for example. So if this wasn't a Regista, if this was something like that, then this deep-lying playmaker would be really, really cool. He'd play the quarterback role. He would recycle it and then rip it across there. He'd then come up here, receive it, and then pass it there to the wing back who goes up. So you can do some really cool things with the deep-lying playmaker on support because they're still holding their position. However, that might open up space a little bit in behind because the deep-lying playmaker support does get a little bit further up. They're not sitting all the way back here. So you could get hit on the break if the opposition team plays really smartly. So the role that I switched to next to the deep-lying playmaker at the moment is a volante. Volante is, what does it mean? It means second defensive midfielder or something like that. It is a little bit different, and they say here, SI says, their role is primarily a defensive one, best suited to being paired with an anchor, and is also different from the ball-winning midfielder, in that they run with the ball, arrive with a late run into the opposition area in much the same way as a box-to-box -box central midfielder does. With a support duty, they will look to support the attack while picking and choosing his opportunities to arrive late. So this can be quite useful for me. It feels very much like a box-to-box, -box, just starting from a defensive midfield position. However, there aren't many instructions in place. If we change him to attack, boom, get further forward. So the mentality being higher means he will get further forward naturally, plus the instruction of get further forward means he will be a box threat. So if you want a midfielder in defensive midfield getting into the opposition box, your choice is a segundo volante. That could be really, really effective. The problem with this is you can't do it from a single midfield situation. So if we try it now, it's possible because still it's a double. If we play another midfielder in here, I don't think it is possible. Segundo volante is gone. You can see it's grayed out. So when you play a midfield three, you can't actually have a volante in here. It only works with a midfield two. If we put a midfield four in there, I don't think it's going to work either. No, it doesn't. If we have a crazy two plus two, can we do a volante? Yes, we can. So a volante kind of needs a guy next to him in a way to make it work. So the game tells me that the segundo volante is best paired with our anchor man. But what it's actually trying to tell me is the segundo volante is a runner. He's going to run up the midfield. So if you want to play a volante, I would play him very much next to a holding role. Either one of those anchor man, defensive midfield, the ball winning midfield, the defend guys or a deep line playmaker, defend or support, who will actually hold their position and be your midfield anchor, while the volante actually provides support into the box. In a support role, you would look for him to get to the edge of the box. In an attacking role, you would look for him to get into the box, especially if your mentality is not too far back. In an attacking mentality with an attack duty, you can really expect him to get into the box, no problem. In terms of giving you a real-life comparison, you can look at a ball-winning midfielder or just a defensive midfielder next to a Regista. So something like this, if we go for ball-winning midfielder defend, and then we go for Regista support. You can visualize this as like your Gattuso-Perlo pairing, 
where Gattuso just wins the ball and lays it off to Perlo for a, a longer pass. You can also kind of think Sami Khedira and Xabi Alonso at Real Madrid, they used to be very similar in, I think, bigger games, where Khedira used to play more of a holding role, win the ball, pass it to Alonso, and Alonso would be a regista. In fact, for me, Xabi Alonso is the perfect regista because he was more mobile, which is what you're going to expect from a regista. Andrea Pirlo, especially in his later years in those great Milan teams, he used to be more of a deep-lying playmaker in support. Whereas for me, and this could be completely off-base because I didn't watch them that much, for me, a volante feels to me more like the David Albelda and Ruben Baraja kind of pairing at Valencia under Rafa Benitez. That kind of feels like a volante and an anchorman or a volante and a defensive midfielder, basically a volante and a holding role, runner-holder pair in defensive midfield because they used to play something like a deeper 4-4-2 didn't they with Joaquin on the right side Vicente and then David Silva on the left hand side and they had who they have up top I can't even remember in any case that's the kind of visualization I have with uh, kind of a Albelda Baraja as a volante and then a holding midfielder beside him that's a combination that you could look to create as well if you want a playmaker there though you also have a roaming playmaker roaming playmaker versus regista it's really hard to identify a big difference for me, a regista seems much more aggressive on the field. He moves more aggressively. One thing about the regista is you can configure him a little bit more. You can make him pass directly. You can give him get further forward or stay wider instructions. If we switch this to roaming playmaker, you can see that our options are more limited. You can't get him wider. You can't get him further forward. He has roaming by definition, but you can get him moving into channels. So that's something to think about. So the roaming playmaker is designed not to go too high up the field, but he can move quite well laterally and he has that free roll. Regista, however, you can kind of define where he goes by giving him get further forward or not giving him that and letting him work from a little bit deeper. So all of those playmaker roles, the deep line playmaker, basically your regista and your roaming playmaker, those are all ball magnets. None of them are really going to change the shape of your team, although your regista and your roaming playmaker will move around quite a lot, so they're very mobile. They might shape change in a sense that they have a free roll, so they might be coming up into weird places to pick up the ball. Your deep line playmaker absolutely does not change the shape of the team. He's also not very mobile. So if you have a player who's really good at passing, really good technician, good mentals, but he's on the wane physically, hello, Andrea Pielo, you might play him as something like a deep line playmaker. Your volante, as we said, is very much a shape changer in the sense that he gets up the field very aggressively. He's a running player, as we said, and he likes to get to the edge or into the box. Anchorman really holds shape. That's all he does. He's about shape. He's about sitting in that number 10 area for the opposition team. Your ball winning midfielder and your defensive midfielder, again, are about winning tackles, winning the ball, interceptions, things like that. The big shape changer in this role is your halfback. Your halfback is going to drop into the center of defense when you have the ball. So he's going to form a back three. In this situation, he's going to form a back three with Van Dijk and Konate. That's what a halfback is going to do. So that is your huge shape changer in defensive midfield. In terms of instructions, he's dribbling less and holding position. So nothing crazy there. He can still pass nicely. So he's not restricted from playing risky passes. He can ping the ball out like a deep line playmaker on defense, no problem. But positionally, he's going to drop back a little bit. He's more about making that back three kind of shape. And therefore, he is not a reliable midfield anchor. If you want to play a halfback, it's better if you get a holding midfielder in some shape or form. That could be with something like an inverted wingback on support, which is essentially a defensive midfielder. So getting into that area while the halfback drops back. That is one way you can create a holding player next to, for example, a regista. So let's actually give this a try. Let's confirm these changes and see how the match engine likes it. All right, I've just skipped past a bunch of set pieces as we just pick up possession here. You can see that our halfback Endo has dropped into the defensive line. Now it's interesting that he's dropped actually to the left. So he's become a left center back while Van Dijk is the central center back and Konate is the right center back. If we look at this, Endo has come in here while Simikas goes up. Let's just have a look at Simikas' position right there. So it's almost as if Endo and Simikas have kind of swapped positions, but Simikas is something of a holding midfielder. He's playing in line with McAllister in front of him. And guess what? We've got that 3-2-5 shape going on already. We've got the three here, we've got the two in midfield, and now we've got five players a bit further up. To be fair, Trent Alexander-Arnold is a fullback on support, so it's more like a 3-2 and then one guy in the middle and then a attacking line of four. Be that as it may, we have created the situation where the halfback actually goes into the defensive line. Let's have a look at this. You see how he stays basically in line with the center backs. 
He's dropping all the way back. In fact, he's the deepest player in that particular move. And Costas down here in the middle is playing that holding midfield role. Look at this. Endo is really where a left back should be. All right, so we're going back into another period of possession. And again, we're seeing exactly the same shape. We've got our inverted wing back coming up into the defensive midfield area while our defensive midfielder is dropping back into that third center back position. So that's really, really cool. If you want him dropping into the middle rather than the outside, you would probably want to play him kind of here and then in a back three, something like this. All right, as you can see, we're setting up for a free kick, but already Endo has moved into that central defense kind of position. Virgil van Dijk is staying to his left and he's in the middle there. So moving the halfback into the middle of defensive midfield helped him come right back to the middle. Now, I'm just picking up here with Fulham on the ball. They have scored from a corner kick in that last little break. But what I do want to show you is the halfback in possession. He drops into the defensive line. But as you can see here, we are defending. So now we're in defensive shape. So we've got our four, our back four here. And we do have the two defensive midfielders perfectly in line. We then have a winger who is tracking back and a winger. So it is really just an attack. And when you have possession that the halfback will do his funky movements. Going back into our tactics view here, we can see that the halfback can be conjured up into different positions. And if he is on the left side of a two, he will try and drop into the fullback area, especially if you have a fullback going up. If he is in the middle like this, he will drop into the middle and your center backs will spread. So you want to position him correctly based on where you want to get him in your possession phase. Obviously, if you want him in this area, you can offset him to the right-hand side. However, we have lost two goals playing a halfback and a regista. And I don't think that's a coincidence. Fulham were able to get on the ball, play it forward, get through us, and have a couple of corners from which they were able to score because something is going wrong in our midfield. That's quite good. To show you that two roles that don't really get along together can be a risk in that sense. You might be creating vulnerabilities for yourself by not setting up those roles and combinations properly. The main reason is the fact that there's no cohesion in this midfield. McAllister is doing his own thing and he's dropping in there or well to the left hand side really in here. And therefore we're opening up the midfield completely. So it wasn't a very good combination of roles. If you are playing a regista, let's play a holding midfielder next to him, just like a defensive midfielder on defend. That's absolutely fine. As we said, a deep lying playmaker can do the job as well. An anchor man can do the job too. So any of those roles based on what your tactics are. In this particular team, I would probably lean towards a ball winning midfielder on defend just because I'm playing a high press and I do want this guy tackling the ball. And that's what Endo likes to do as well in real life. So it makes sense to me for him to be a ball winning midfielder. Next to a Regista again, and he is a ball winning midfielder in defend so that he has hold position on. If we change ball winning midfielder to support, he doesn't have hold position. All we've got is tackle harder now. So the ball winning midfielder on support can actually be like a normal midfielder who can do kind of anything, but he will tackle harder. He will try and win that ball. That's the big thing with the support duty. So support duty guy can actually play good passes. He can get involved could be very, very useful. If you have a complete midfielder with a good tackling stat, you can tell the guy, win the ball and then do stuff with it. Run with it if you want. Dribble with it. Pass it. Play to your player traits. Completely fine with a ball-winning midfielder on support. So I have mostly showed you the different pairs, the fact that you're more mobile midfielders like the Regista, like the Romer and the Segundo Volante. Basically, these last three should be paired with one of the first four, generally speaking. Maybe not support duty for the ball winning midfielder because of how mobile these guys are. You want one of the holding players next to them if you're looking at a defensive midfield pairing. If you are looking at something like a midfield three, you can't unfortunately use the segundo volante, but you can get a halfback into the middle of your center back. So that is an option. You can absolutely play a regista. Now, are you enough of a mad lad to do something like this? Maybe. It is risky though, because in this current setup, you don't actually have a holding midfielder. So I would switch this guy to defend and suddenly we've unlocked Gennaro Gattuso. In this situation, having one of your center midfielders as the holding player and your aggressive regista coming up from behind him is absolutely fine. That is completely cool. Then you can have this central midfielder doing something funky. You can have him as a Mazala or something like that, which is great because it frees up the space for the regista to move into and create and he gives you an attacking run for the Regista to find. So that could be a nice combination. But my focus here specifically is on the shape 
and having enough defensive stability. In terms of creating goals, your Regista, as you saw at the start of this video, when we started with a defensive midfielder and a Regista, you saw what McAllister was doing. He was playing really aggressive stuff. So Regista can do fantastic things for you that a lot of other roles can't do. And again, just remember which roles are the holding roles. You have your top four, essentially, when you choose this, your defensive midfield, the deep line playmaker, ball winner, and anchor man. So if you're in a back three, again, you can kind of choose what you want. Your defensive player will normally be the holding player. If you have a mobile guy like a Regista or a Romer, you should have one of the other two midfielders as a holder or bring an inverted wing back into the holding area. But again, that's risky because they take a while to transition. Therefore, having a central midfielder on defend, deep line playmaker on defend or something like that as one of the other midfielders is a great idea because it gives your Regista or roaming playmaker the freedom to actually do what he wants to do. If he is a holding player, you can kind of choose whatever you want. An anchor man is good for cutting the passing lines, but he is quite deep. So you probably want uh, either one or even two support players next to him so that they're deep enough to get the ball from him because he's taking fewer risks. If they bomb up forward, he's not going to actually connect the dots. He won't even find his midfield players with passes most of the time. So that can be really frustrating. So he'll go out or he'll go back. That can be quite tricky. So then you might want something like a defensive midfielder on defend. He does take slightly more risks than the anchorman, which is to say he's on normal passing instructions. So he can actually do a decent job finding players who are further forward. He's not always going to play that risky pass because again, he's on defend duty. He's deep on the pitch. His primary, his mentality, you could say, is balanced, but this is an attacking tactic. So he's much more conservative than the rest of your team. And therefore he'll keep it quite calm with his passing. If you don't want him to keep calm with his passing, change him to a deep line playmaker. He's still not going to take more risks in defend duty, but his mentality is slightly higher than the defensive midfielder. He's also a playmaker, so he'll get the ball a little bit more. Your other teammates will find him more. So if you've got really defensive players back here, but this guy is looking to play good passes, then he'll ping the ball out. If you want him to really be attacking with pinging the ball out, you can either change him to a support duty, so he then starts taking more risks. So now you've got the quarterback. You can also just play a defensive midfielder on defend, go in, and configure him to take more risks. Now suddenly you've got the passing range of a deep line playmaker, almost, but you also aren't creating a ball magnet of a player. So you're getting a player who, when he does get on the ball, he will look to ping it out, but your players are not always gonna try and find him. So this could actually be decent for, let's say a player with really high vision in this area, like McAllister, 17 vision, 16 passing, 16 technique, brilliant. And decision making 16, again, fantastic player for that job but not a playmaker. So your players aren't always just looking to give the ball to him. The problem with a aggressive passer in this area in a playmaker role is that your other players will look to find them all the time and then they'll take high risk passes all the time and then you lose the ball quite a lot. So putting a defensive midfield and then adding take more risks can reduce that a little bit, but he might still lose the ball a lot if he doesn't take the right decisions or you don't have the players going into the right areas in front of him for him to find. Point being, again, don't be afraid to customize, especially if you're playing roles like ball-winning midfielders over here, because once they take a yellow card, you are walking a tightrope. Then you might, especially if you're in this area, you can, again, shift him to a defensive midfielder, go in, and then customize him a little bit. You know, take fewer risks, do that kind of thing. And then you can even ease off tackles if you really want to make sure he's on the pitch and it's a tricky player, let's say like a Cristian Romero or someone then you really probably want to ease off tackles. That could be good to keep him on the field. Obviously, Romero isn't a defensive midfielder. I think he only plays centre-back, but hey, he's the first dirty player I could think of. Sorry, um, supposedly dirty, according to attributes. Don't want to get sued or anything like that. So I hope that has been interesting. Again, my big takeaway from this is to pair a mobile player like a Volante or a Regista or something like that with a more holding player. That tends to be the best way to work out a midfield. If you're playing a midfield three again, decide who your holder is going to be, who is going to be your playmaker, who is going to be your runner. That's one of the nicest things really of playing a midfield three because you can do something like a essentially a playmaker. You can play a holder and then you can have a runner which we've just configured up over here. Your defensive midfielder holds, your advanced playmaker, you know, is a playmaker. And then this guy's a runner who gets up behind the forwards. Creating those kind of things, it's good to know which roles do what. And it's always good to remember that these different roles can be configured to how you want as well. I hope I've covered most of the stuff. This has been actually way longer than I wanted it to be, but that seems to be my thing. So thanks a lot, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. I would love to talk to you as usual in the comments below.